Hello and welcome to another painting video. In this video I'll be painting this feculent gnarlma, the Nurgle tree you do not want to approach. This is such a weird model and since I like the way Games Workshop has painted it, I'm going to try to emulate that. Let's begin, shall we? First let's tackle the biggest part of the model, which is the tree bark itself. I start with a base coat of watered down wildwood. I don't want to start off too dark as I'll be working with washes. When that is dry I'm going to use my first wash, Ethonian Camo Shade. I don't cover the entire tree with it, just patches here and there. Now I'm taking a second wash, Reikland Flesh Shade and add this to the patches I did not cover in the previous step. Next, I'm dry brushing Bane Blade Brown over the entire model. And a dry brush of Karak Stone. And also a dry brush of Usapti Bone. Subtle paints, but the effect will look great. Now I want to bring in some different hues on the tree. First, I cover several patches with a watered down Plague Bearer Flesh. And I do the same with a watered down Gullyman flesh. Finally, I add the last dry brush, which is Kisla flesh, over everything. This tree has boils. Of course it does. I base coat these with the Yenden Yellow contrast paint. And then I add two highlights. First, Karak Stone. And finally a highlight of Screaming Skull. A big chunk of this model already looks nice and nurgly, but there is a lot more to do. Let's continue on with the ground. Usually I do the base or ground last, but as it is a big part of the model, it's best to just get it out of the way. The first base coat is Basilicanum Grey. Then I wash everything with Agrax Earthshade, excluding the rocks. Now I dry brush Steel Legion Drap and I try not to hit the rocks too much. I do the same with a dry brush of Teleran Sand. Now I wash the ground or dirt with Athonian Camo Shade to make it look more nasty. Next, I highlight the rocks with Administratum Grey. It seems the Gnarlma already has some victims. The skulls are base coated with Usapti Bone. And I add Skeleton Horde for some quick shading. I think the ground matches very well with the tree. Now that we've finished the big areas, we can start on all the details festooned around the model. These weird tentacles I base go with Gulliman Flesh. And then I give them a wash of Carolberg Crimson. Next, I wash the lower part of the tentacles with Druki Violet. And now to make the tentacles look more slimy. First I highlight with Kislev Flesh. And the last highlight is Flayed One Flesh. I tried to paint these tentacles the same way as Games Workshop has done and I gotta say they work really well with this paint scheme. I will make them a little bit more nasty near the end of the video. The vile mouth of the tree has loads of maggots. I base coat these with Usapti Bone. Then I wash the maggots with Athonian Camo Shade. And I give them a dry brush of Palette Switch Flesh. Next I paint the gums of the mouth with a wash of Druki Violet. The purple is a little bit too bright, 
So I'm darkening it with a wash of Agrax Earth Shade. Lastly, I highlight the gums with Slanesh Gray. The teeth I give a base coat of Usapti Bone. And a nice thick wash of Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint. Finally, I highlight the teeth with Screaming Skull. It would have been way easier to leave the tree as a sub-assembly in order to paint the maggots, but by being careful I was able to pull it off. On to the brass bells which are hanging all over the model. I base coat these bells with Balthazar Gold. The metal trims and rings I base coat with Lead Belcher. Then I wash everything in Agrax Earth Shade. And highlight everything with Stormhost Silver. On the metal parts I use Ryza Rust to add a quick rust effect. And I use Nihilac Oxide to add a verdigris effect on the brass. Here we have some bells hanging from the branch. I probably won't glue these to the model unless they keep falling off during a game, but I can imagine that there will be breakage if I glue them on. These weird bulbs of boils are base coated with the end and yellow contrast paint. Next, I give them a wash of Ethonian Camo Shade. This removes the red shading and adds some sickly looking green shading to the bulbs. Next, I dry brush Usapti Bone over some parts of the bulbs. And I finish with a highlight of Screaming Skull. I will paint these horns a bit different. First, I base coat with Rhinox Hide. Then I highlight with Mornfang Brown. Note that I am moving towards the tip of the horns, leaving the base of the horns the original base color. Now two more highlights. The first one is Usapti Bone. And I finish painting the tips of the horns with Screaming Skull. I am really happy with this result. Almost done. Now to finish up a few more small details. First I base coat everything I'm doing here with Wraithbone. Then I paint the ropes with Gore Guntra fur. The Nurgling peeking outside I base coat with Plague Bearer Flesh. And I give him a wash of Serapim Sepia. Next, I give the Nurgling skin a highlight of Creek Khaki. And I paint the horns with Black Templar Contrast Paint. And the teeth are painted with Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint. The swarm of flies I paint with two paints. The little bodies are painted with Black Templar. And the wings I paint with Administratum Grey. And then we are left with one final step, which is Nurgle's Rot. Basically add it wherever you want. It works great between the boils, on the tentacles, and on the mouth. And here we have a finished Feculent Gnarl Maw. What a great addition to my Maggotkin army. It is fun painting something else than just tiny models. And a piece of scenery can be a bit daunting, but fortunately this one isn't too big. And it's so full of character. Stay tuned for my next video, which will be the grand finale for my Maggot King Army painting videos. Be sure to check out my Instagram, where I show pictures of new projects and behind the scenes stuff I'm working on. Thanks for watching!